a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Alsan Suchi Alsan Suchi is a Burmese politician, diplomat, author, and Nobel Peace Prize laureate. She is the leader of the National League for Democracy and the first and incumbent state councillor. A position akin to a prime minister. She is also the first woman to serve as Minister for Foreign Affairs, for the President's Office, for Electric Power and Energy, and for Education. From 2012 to 2016 she was an MP for Kowu Township to the House of Representatives. The youngest daughter of Aung San, father of the nation of modern-day Myanmar, and Kin Chi, Aung San Suu Kyi was born in Rangoon, British Burma. After graduating from the University of Delhi in 1964 and the University of Oxford in 1968, she worked at the United Nations for three years. She married Michael Harris in 1972, with whom she had two children. Aung San Suu Kyi rose to prominence in the 1988 uprisings, and became the General Secretary of the National League for Democracy which she had newly formed with the help of several retired army officials who criticized the military junta. In the 1990 elections, NLD won 81% of the seats in parliament, but the results were nullified. As the military refused to hand over power, resulting in an international outcry. She had, however, already been detained under house arrest before the elections. She remained under house arrest for almost 15 of the 21 years from 1989 to 2010, becoming one of the world's most prominent political prisoners. Her party boycotted the 2010 elections, resulting in a decisive victory for the military-backed Union Solidarity and Development Party. Aung San Suu Kyi became a Piathulator MP while her party won 43 of the 45 vacant seats in the 2012 by-elections. In the 2015 elections, her party won a landslide victory, taking 86% of the seats in the Assembly of the Union were more than the 67% supermajority needed to ensure that its preferred candidates were elected president and second vice president in the presidential electoral college. Although she was prohibited from becoming the president due to a clause in the constitution her late husband, and children are foreign citizens she assumed the newly created role of state councillor, a role akin to a prime minister or a head of government. Aung San Suu Kyi's honors include the Nobel Peace Prize, which she won in 1991. Time magazine named her one of the children of Gandhi and his spiritual heir to non-violence since ascending to the office of state councillor. Aung San Suu Kyi has drawn criticism from many countries organizations and figures over her inaction to the persecution of the Rohingya people in Rakhine state and refusal to accept that Myanmar's military has committed massacres. Under her leadership, Myanmar has also drawn international criticism for prosecutions of journalists. Name Aung San Suu Kyi, like other Burmese names, includes no surname but is only a personal name, in her case derived from three relatives, Aung San, from her father, Su, from her paternal grandmother, and, Chi, from her mother Kin Chi. The Burmese refer to her as Dor Aung San Su Chi. Dor, literally meaning, aunt, is not part of her name, but is an honorific for any older and revered woman, akin to, madam. Burmese sometimes address her as Dor Su or Amay Su, personal life. Aung San Suu Kyi was born on 19 June 1945 in Rangoon, British Burma. According to Peter Popham, she was born in a small village outside Rangoon called Mwaisang. Her father, Aung San, founded the modern Burmese army and negotiated Burma's independence from the British Empire in 1947. He was assassinated by his rivals in the same year. She grew up with her mother, Kin Chi, and two brothers, Aung San Lin and Aung San Wu, in Rangoon. Aung San Lin died at the age of eight, when he drowned in an ornamental lake on the grounds of the house. Her elder brother emigrated to San Diego, California, becoming a United States citizen. After Aung San Lin's death, 
The family moved to a house by Inya Lake where Aung San Suu Kyi met people of various backgrounds, political views and religions. She was educated in Methodist English High School for much of her childhood in Burma, where she was noted as having a talent for learning languages. She speaks four languages, Burmese, English, French, and Japanese. She is a Theravada Buddhist. Su Kyi's mother, Kin Chi, gained prominence as a political figure in the newly formed Burmese government. She was appointed Burmese ambassador to India and Nepal in 1960, and Aung San Suu Kyi followed her there. She studied in the Convent of Jesus and Mary School in New Delhi, and graduated from Lady Sri Ram College, a constituent college of the University of Delhi in New Delhi, with a degree in politics in 1964. Suu Kyi continued her education at St. Hugh's College, Oxford obtaining a BA degree in philosophy, politics and economics in 1967, graduating with a third and MA degree in politics in 1968. After graduating, she lived in New York City with family friend Martha E, who was once a popular Burmese pop singer. She worked at the United Nations for three years, primarily on budget matters, writing daily to her future husband, Dr. Michael Harris. On 1 January 1972, Aung San Suu Kyi and Aris, a scholar of Tibetan culture and literature, living abroad in Bhutan, were married. The following year she gave birth to their first son, Alexander Aris, in London. Their second son, Kim, was born in 1977. Between 1985 and 1987, Aung San Suu Kyi was working toward an MPhil degree in Burmese literature as a research student at SOAS, the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London. She was elected as an honorary fellow of St. Hughes in 1990. For two years, she was a fellow at the Indian Institute of Advanced Studies in Shimla, India. She also worked for the Government of the Union of Burma. In 1988, Aung San Suu Kyi returned to Burma, at first to tent for her ailing mother, but later to lead the pro-democracy movement. Aris' visit in Christmas 1995 turned out to be the last time that he and Aung San Suu Kyi met. As Aung San Suu Kyi remained in Burma and the Burmese dictatorship denied him any further entry visas, Aris was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 1997 which was later found to be terminal. Despite appeals from prominent figures and organizations, including the United States, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan and Pope John Paul II, the Burmese government would not grant Harris a visa, saying that they did not have the facilities to care for him, and instead urged Aung San Suu Kyi to leave the country to visit him. She was at that time temporarily free from house arrest, but was unwilling to depart. Fearing that she would be refused re-entry if she left, as she did not trust the military junta's assurance that she could return, Aris died on his 53rd birthday on 27 March 1999, since 1989. When his wife was first placed under house arrest, he had seen her only five times, the last of which was for Christmas in 1995. She was also separated from her children, who live in the United Kingdom. But starting in 2011, they have visited her in Burma. On 2 May 2008, after Cyclone Nagas hit Burma, Aung San Suu Kyi's dilapidated lakeside bungalow lost its roof and electricity. While the cyclone also left entire villages in the Irrawaddy Delta submerged. Plans to renovate and repair the house were announced in August 2009. Suu Kyi was released from house arrest on 13 November 2010 political beginning. Coincidentally, when Aung San Suu Kyi returned to Burma in 1988, the longtime military leader of Burma and head of the ruling party, General Ni Win, stepped down. Mass demonstrations for democracy followed that event on 8 August 1988, which were violently suppressed in what came to be known as the 8888 Uprising. On 26 August 1988, she addressed half a million people at a mass rally in front of the Schwedegan Pagoda in the capital, calling for a democratic government. 
However, in September, a new military junta took power. Influenced by both Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy of non-violence and more specifically by Buddhist concepts, Aung San Suu Kyi entered politics to work for democratization. Helt found the National League for Democracy on 27 September 1988, but was put under house arrest on 20 July 1989. Offered freedom if she left the country, she refused. Despite her philosophy of non-violence, a group of ex-military commanders and senior politicians who joined NLD during the crisis believed that she was too confrontational and left NLD. However, she retained enormous popularity and support among NLD youths with whom she spent most of her time. During her time under house arrest, Aung San Suu Kyi devoted herself to Buddhist meditation practices and to studying Buddhist thought. This deeper interest in Buddhism is reflected in her writings as more emphasis is put on love and compassion. There also emerged more discussion on the compatibility of democracy and Buddhism, and the ability of gaining freedom from an authoritarian government through Buddhism. During the crisis, the previous democratically elected Prime Minister of Burma, Yu Nyu, initiated to form an interim government and invited opposition leaders to join him. Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi had signaled his readiness to recognize the interim government. However, Aung San Suu Kyi categorically rejected Yu Nyu's plan by saying, the future of the opposition would be decided by masses of the people. Ex-Brigadier General Abghiz, another influential politician at the time of the 8,888 crisis and the first chairman in the history of the NLD, followed the suit and rejected the plan after Aung San Suu Kyi's refusal. Argyes later accused several NLD members of being communists and resigned from the party. 1990 General Election and Nobel Peace Prize In 1990, the military junta called a general election, in which the National League for Democracy received 59% of the votes, guaranteeing NLD 80% of the parliament seats. Some claim that Aung San Suu Kyi would have assumed the office of Prime Minister. In fact, however, as she was not permitted, she did not stand as a candidate in the elections. Instead, the results were nullified, and the military refused to hand over power, resulting in an international outcry. Aung San Suu Kyi was placed under house arrest at her home on University Avenue in Rangoon during which time she was awarded the Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought in 1990, and the Nobel Peace Prize the year after. Her sons Alexander and Kim accepted the Nobel Peace Prize on her behalf. Aung San Suu Kyi used the Nobel Peace Prize's 1.3 million USD prize money to establish a health and education trust for the Burmese people. Around this time, Aung San Suu Kyi chose non-violence as an expedient political tactic. Stating in 2007, I do not hold to non-violence for moral reasons, but for political and practical reasons. Aung San Suu Kyi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991. The decision of the Nobel Committee mentions, in 1995 Aung San Suu Kyi delivered the keynote address at the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing. 1996 Attack On the 9th of November 1996, the motorcade that Aung San Suu Kyi was traveling in with other National League for Democracy leaders Tinu and Chiman, was attacked in Yangon. About 200 men swooped down on the motorcade, wielding metal chains, metal batons, stones and other weapons. The car that Aung San Suu Kyi was in had its rear window smashed, and the car with Tinu and Chiman had its rear window and two back door windows shattered. It is believed the offenders were members of the Union Solidarity and Development Association who were allegedly paid 500 kyats each to participate. The NLD lodged an official complaint with the police. And according to reports the government launched an investigation, but no action was taken. House Arrest Aung San Suu Kyi was placed under house arrest for a total of 15 years over a 21-year period on numerous occasions, since she began her political career, during which time she was prevented from meeting her party supporters and international visitors. 
In an interview, she said that while under house arrest she spent her time reading philosophy, politics, and biographies that her husband had sent her. She also passed the time playing the piano, and was occasionally allowed visits from foreign diplomats as well as from her personal physician, although under house arrest. Aung San Suu Kyi was granted permission to leave Burma under the condition that she never return, which she refused. As a mother, the greater sacrifice was giving up my sons. But I was always aware of the fact that others had given up more than me. I never forget that my colleagues who are in prison suffer not only physically, but mentally for their families who have no security outside in the larger prison of Burma under authoritarian rule. Her loyalty to the people of Burma and her solidarity with those imprisoned for their pro-democratic acts have earned her deep respect among the Burmese people. The media were also prevented from visiting Aung San Suu Kyi. As occurred in 1998 when journalist Maurizio Giuliano, after photographing her, was stopped by customs officials who then confiscated all his films, tapes and some notes. In contrast, Aung San Suu Kyi did have visits from government representatives, such as during her autumn 1994 house arrest when she met the leader of Burma, General Dan Shui, and General Kin Young on the 20th of September in the first meeting since she had been placed in detention. On several occasions during her house arrest, she had periods of poor health and as a result was hospitalized. The Burmese government detained and kept Aung San Suu Kyi imprisoned because it viewed her as someone, likely to undermine the community peace and stability, of the country, and used both Article 10 and 10 of the 1975 State Protection Act, and Section 22 of the, law to safeguard the state against the dangers of those desiring to cause subversive acts, as legal tools against her. She continuously appealed her detention, and many nations and figures continued to call for her release and that of 2,100 other political prisoners in the country. On 12 November 2010, days after the junta-backed Union Solidarity and Development Party won elections conducted after a gap of 20 years, the junta finally agreed to sign orders allowing Sang San Uukis release. And Suu Kyi's house arrest term came to an end on 13 November 2010. United Nations Involvement The United Nations has attempted to facilitate dialogue between the junta and Aung San Suu Kyi. On 6 May 2002, following secret confidence-building negotiations led by the UN, the government released her. A government spokesman said that she was free to move, because we are confident that we can trust each other. Aung San Suu Kyi proclaimed, a new dawn for the country. However, on 30 May 2003 in an incident similar to the 1996 attack on her, a government-sponsored mob attacked her caravan in the northern village of Dipayan, murdering and wounding many of her supporters. Aung San Suu Kyi fled the scene with the help of her driver, Cho So Lin, but was arrested upon reaching Yi Yu. The government imprisoned her at Insean Prison in Rangoon. After she underwent a hysterectomy in September 2003, the government again placed her under house arrest in Rangoon. The results from the UN facilitation have been mixed. Reza Ali Ismail, UN Special Envoy to Burma, met with Aung San Suu Kyi. Ismail resigned from his post the following year, partly because he was denied re-entry to Burma on several occasions. Several years later in 2006, Ibrahim Gambari, UN Under Secretary General of Department of Political Affairs met with Aung San Suu Kyi, the first visit by a foreign official since 2004. He also met with Suu Kyi later the same year. On 2 October 2007, Gambari returned to talk to her again after seeing Vin Shui and other members of the senior leadership in Napi's door. State television broadcast Aung San Suu Kyi with Gambari, stating that they had met twice. This was Aung San Suu Kyi's first appearance in state media in the four years since her current detention began. 
The United Nations Working Group for Arbitrary Detention published an opinion that Aung San Suu Kyi's deprivation of liberty was arbitrary and in contravention of Article 9 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948, and requested that the authorities in Burma set her free, but the authorities ignored the request at that time. The UN report said that according to the Burmese government's reply, Do Aung San Suu Kyi has not been arrested, but has only been taken into protective custody for her own safety, and while it could have instituted legal action against her under the country's domestic legislation, it has preferred to adopt a magnanimous attitude and is providing her with protection in her own interests. Such claims were rejected by Brig General Kin Yi, chief of Myanmar Police Force, on 18 January 2007. The state-run paper New Light of Myanmar accused Suu Kyi of tax evasion for spending her Nobel Prize money outside the country. The accusation followed the defeat of a US-sponsored United Nations Security Council resolution condemning Burma as a threat to international security. The resolution was defeated because of strong opposition from China, which has strong ties with the military junta. In November 2007, it was reported that Aung San Suu Kyi would meet her political allies National League for Democracy along with the government minister. The ruling junta made the official announcement on state TV and radio just hours after UN Special Envoy Ibrahim Gambari ended his second visit to Burma. The NLD confirmed that it had received the invitation to hold talks with Suu Kyi. However, the process delivered few concrete results. On 3 July 2009, UN Secretary-General Ban Ki-moon went to Burma to pressure the junta into releasing Aung San Suu Kyi and to institute democratic reform. However, on departing from Burma, Ban Ki-moon said he was disappointed with the visit after junta leader then Shui refused permission for him to visit Aung San Suu Kyi, citing her ongoing trial. Ban said he was deeply disappointed that they have missed a very important opportunity. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?